So why'd he come to you? He told me he got my name out of the telephone book. You expect us to believe that? He found your card on his body. They get him out with bubble gum. You said you left your car at Beach Road and Pacific Coast Highway. How come we found your car at Marion's place? Well, even Ralph can answer that. Obviously, somebody drove it there. What happened to the 15000 Marion had on him? I bought the fence bonds. All right, Marlowe, let's start again, huh? From the beginning. That soldier's place. Now, why don't I make it easy on all of us and tell you just what you want to hear? This ferry hired me to exchange a necklace for cash for a friend of his. We drove out to the woods. I shot him. I buried the 15 grand. I drove my car back to his place, walked 15 miles back to the woods, knocked myself in the head, and then called the police. You know, we can book your ass right now. You know that, don't you? Well, why didn't you go ahead and do it? Because if you're looking for a confession, I'm fresh out. Well, what do you think happened? Suppose Marion wanted the money, and he figured me for the fall guy. Wouldn't he act just the way he did? Uh, yeah, and then kill himself. He had an accomplice. The accomplice is supposed to knock us out, maybe, and then take off with the money. Only the accomplice double-crossed him. He killed Mary. Didn't have to kill me because he figured you'd do exactly as you had, just try to fit me into the frame. It fits the facts. It's a theory, anyway. Lieutenant, the commissioner wants to see you. Bring him in my office. This phone kept ringing. It was driving me nuts. I prayed someone would answer it. I didn't realize it was ringing inside my head. Where are you wanting? Sit him down. Sit him over there. I'd once seen a photo of Frances Amthor, L.A.'s famous madam. And there she was, in the flesh. Hey, did I deliver? Huh? Go on, honey. OK, girls. Nice to meet you, Mr. Marlowe. I'm so glad you could make it. It's nice to have a night out with the boys. Please, don't smoke, Mr. Marlowe. I don't like it. Honey, go on to your room. I just want to speak to Moose Malloy. I'm only going to ask you once. Who told you to get up? I think you're a very stupid person. You look stupid, you're in a stupid business, and you're on a stupid case. I get it. I'm stupid. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that, Marla. full of smoke. The smoke hung straight up in the air in thin lines, straight up and down like a curtain of small, clear beads. It didn't dissolve, didn't float off, didn't move. It was a gray web woven by a thousand spiders. 
I wondered how they'd got them to work together. Okay, Marlowe, I said. You're a tough guy. Six feet of iron man, 190 pounds stripped and with your face washed. Hard muscles and no glass jaw. You can take it. You've been sat down twice. You've been shot full of hop and kept under it until you were as crazy as two waltzing mice. And what does all that amount to? Routine. Now, let's see you do something really tough, like getting up. I crawled along the floor, thinking, how the hell can I get under that door? I sensed somebody else in the room. I wished it was part of my nightmare, but it wasn't. It was Tommy Ray. He'd never blow another horn. I was torn between making myself walk and wanting to lie down on the bed. It was a lovely bed. It was made of rose leaves. It was the most beautiful bed in the world. They had got it from Carol Lombard. It was too soft for her. I was still fighting it, though, still walking, when some footsteps I heard made up my mind for me. I had to get back into bed, like it or not. I decided to play dead. I didn't have to be a hell of an actor. Come on, hillbilly. Rise and shine. Come on. Amp door, won't you? Hey, you ain't croaked, are you? If I had any sense, I would have tried to get out of there. But sometimes I'm short on sense. All I could think of was getting my hands on Francis Amthor. Why are you telling me all this? Because I'm going out on that boat. I'm taking Malloy out with me. I get this funny feeling I'm not coming back alive unless I'm with the cops. Look, if I went out on that boat, I'd get busted. Well, at least you're honest about it. An honest cop. Yeah, I'm supposed to bring you in. If I let you go, and I said if, Marlowe, I'd be sticking my neck way out. Thanks, Nelty. But that's not what I need. What I need is another drink. I need a lot of life insurance. I need a home in the country. I need a vacation. I'm tired, Nalty. Everything I touch turns to shit. I've got a hat, a coat, and a gun. That's it. Look, we've known each other for a long time, Nalty. You've got to let me go. Otherwise, that kid of Tommy Ray's is going to haunt me for the rest of my life for letting him kill his old man. He will, you know. Does Brunette know you're coming? Not unless you tell him. Give me five minutes to start back to town, then do anything you want. Nothing. Thanks. Sure. Bagby and Smith, a couple of run-of-the-mill pitchers, stopped DiMaggio. Maybe they had a little extra last night like Nolte had tonight. I had two grand inside my breast pocket that needed a home, and I knew just the place.